Hi, this is Matt Macintosh, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how you can go about retopping an object. So, first off, start by selecting the object you want to work with. Look to delete any subdivision history. Um, highlight any of the tools that might be appropriate for what you're going to be working on, and select the topology tool. Okay, so um, one quick thing before we get started with this is maybe look to turn off that dynamic feature uh, on your brush as it does tend to interfere with stuff um, from time to time. So the way that it's set up in ZBrush, um, you can just start drawing these guidelines around your object to start creating the new topology that you want for your character. So the, the, cool, uh, the cool thing about having um, new topology is that you can make it in a way that's more appropriate for use in games. And this technique allows you to do that in a pretty, pretty quick method. Um, <clears throat> I've been trying to get this down to, you know, 20 minutes or so, because it can be like watching paint dry. Um, but unfortunately, I've not managed to do that. We're going to be at about half an hour with this video. So um, <clears throat> what you need to be looking at doing to start off with is creating any important loops um, that pick up major details, so like the edges of things. Um, with this instance, as you can see, I'm just capturing the edge of uh, the eyelid and where lines are quite meeting, I'm creating uh, a continuation by hovering over the end piece until it goes green, like like so, and then you can carry on drawing, okay? So you can use that if you've not, um, if you've not got the full length of uh, a line that you're after. Now to go about starting to make uh, your geometry pieces, your lines need to intersect across uh, the geometry. And as you can see, it starts popping in um, new examples of geometry to work with. So at the moment, you can't really move these points around um, you have to rely on either getting it right the first time or maybe adjusting them or removing them at some point later on. Um, don't worry, I will cover that during the course of this video. Uh, but as I'm just going around this section at the moment, I might as well get some eye information in there. Okay, so if you control Z and you've turned that dynamic feature off, that box pops up asking you whether you want to turn it off again. Um, it is a little bit of a fiddly button to turn off and as you can see I've just caught the, the radial size um, of the, the brush just by accident. If you do get this kind of weird thing going on where the line goes off to the edge of the screen, shrink down your reticle, turn that dynamic feature off and you'll find that you'll have far more control over this brush. Okay, so I'm just going to continue round adding in points with this particular area. <clears throat> okay, um, ZBrush doesn't handle five-sided polys um, or open edges at all. So if you've got any, it's not actually gonna show anything up. Uh, you need to go the whole way through those lines to make a full square. It can do triangles, but to be honest, if you're doing this sort of retopping, you want to try and avoid triangles as, you know, you, you've got the option for collapsing edges down in a different program like Max or Maya or Silo or whatever um, at a later point. So you might as well try and keep it quadded. There's no kind of uh, penalization for, um, you know, going over the top with the amount of quads that you put into this. So make sure, you know, you get a clean topology. That's more important. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got the majority of the lines going around the eyes there. Um, what I'll look to do now is, okay, that warning's come up again, so I'm just going to skip that so I don't get that warning again. And every time you get that warning, it increases your dynamic, it, it turns dynamic back on. Um, anyway, right, lazy mouse. You can use this to do extended lines or straight lines. So when you start drawing it, you get this red line that 
um, follows your cursor and the cursor actually goes ahead of where the line's being created so it allows you to you know have a bit of uh, wiggle room for the errors and things um, because you can just keep on drawing straight lines with it because it, it drags so far behind the actual cursor okay for the intricate details I'd recommend that you turn that stuff off because it can actually interfere quite considerably when you try to do minute details. Yeah, just drawing some lines across here for the uh, the bridge of the nose, um, and yeah, if if you press the Alt key and you've you've drawn a line and you want rid of it, just press the Alt key and drag over an existing line, and it should get rid of. Uh, of that particular kind of strand. Okay, so yeah, um, <clears throat> just on this internal bit, I've um, I want to decrease the size of this reticle, and again, that dynamic feature keeps turning itself on. But yeah, um, there you go. If you press the Alt key and drag over one of these lines it vanishes unfortunately this is taking all of the lines at once and keeps turning that dynamic feature on so what i'm going to do is work on a different line and hopefully i'll be able to kind of build up the information as i'm going here so rather than trying to get rid of that line i'll just cross it here and i'll get rid of these internal ones so that's just the alt key dragging over the top of it and what I'm going to do now is draw from the corner of the eye up to the bridge of the nose and hopefully I should get those points popping back into place. There we go. Okay, so that's nearly it for the eye. Um, now I need to start looking at extending some of these points out uh, for the rest of the face. So the way I'm going to do that is first draw the uh, eyebrow area in. How you go about making these things is entirely up to you. Um, when I worked in industry, I did know some people that had particular kind of rules as to how many spans you put, put in around an eye or a mouth, and it should all link up into each other. I, I never tended to do any of that sort of stuff. It was more a case of just um, think of it like a puzzle. Um, if you've got like a set formula that you go to each time, it can get pretty boring. So what I tend to do is just make it up as I'm going along um, and that can kind of lead to finding new and better ways of, of putting your topology together so I would advise maybe having to play around with stuff um, and as you can see there just controls edit and go back and it's turned the dynamic feature on but for what I'm doing with these because it's not so intricate I can continue on with it um, <clears throat> but yeah as I was saying Experiment um, with the topology and just find a way that works for you. But just try to keep the, the core loops around eyeballs and things like that. And what you should be looking to avoid is you know, diamond um, edges like this. Yeah, um, That's just going to lead to really bad kind of movement um, around the brow. So you should be looking to get rid of that and maybe extend the lines off so that they're not quite as uh, angular as that point. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just press the Alt key and get rid of some of those lines. So I'm just dragging over the top of it. And I'm just going to extend this line down and then create a pull in that edge there, in that point. And I can extend back around the head then and give a, a much straighter line going down in front of the ear. So try to avoid those sharp corners. Now, if I was going to be making the whole head, I'd be using these lines to feed into the ear. So I need a few of those to actually pick up a, a bit of the ear information. Um, but now I'm going to move down towards the nose and just put in a few loops as to where these things might actually start lining up with, uh, with those ones that I've just drawn on the side of the head. So I'm going to put in some information for the cheek here. And 
what I think I'll do is I'll just draw some of these lines down to to feed into the mouth area so that I get an indication of whether some of these kind of go straight up towards the eye or they go further back in the in the face. Um, so if you remember back to the lecture, um, I mentioned that nasolabial fold. And what I'm trying to do with this particular element is capture that. So it goes down from the corner of the nose and around the edge of the mouth. <clears throat> so that that is there for if you, you're going to do any sort of morph targets or... Um, facial animation you can use that uh, to create a not a realistic smile but a more effective one um, because the the loops are there to support it actually moving okay so nose wise um, I kind of want to feed that into a mouth loop as well and I'm just going to bring some of these lines down into the nostril area and around that kind of edge of the nose there. Try to follow the contours of your uh, your object as effectively as possible. So if there's any important information in there you're going to try to to capture that as much as possible. And the other thing to bear in mind as well is try to keep your reticle quite small uh, for doing these intricate aspects because otherwise it could capture something else and you end up with a point where you don't want it. Okay, it keeps turning itself on for some bizarre reason. Um, <clears throat> if it does do that and it's not interfering with your workflow, keep it on, but otherwise it, it can become a hindrance. Okay, in this section I've got like a five pointer there and by dragging through a line from that, that weird indentation you get on your top lip um, I can kind of get rid of that five pointer. So again, yeah, it's just turned itself back on. Um, I'm starting to get a bit frustrated with it doing this. Um, what I want to do now is put a, a central line down the uh, bridge of the nose so yeah I've got my lazy mouse on and again I can just draw a center line and wherever it intersects it should create some topology and there we go okay so it's, it's got rid of the um, five point of that well yeah okay it's um, <laughs> I'm just going to draw this quad back in so that I've not got that five pointer thing going on. Okay. Um, I'm just drawing in a little section here for just underneath the nose so that you can uh, you can get that or capture that uh, dimple information that you get on your top lip. Um, so what I'm also going to do now is try building up some shape for the lips. And yeah, I just want to make sure that it follows the shape of that contour there. And yeah, just going to connect up some of these lines so that it's a little bit more consistent with the lines that are on there. So um, <clears throat> I've got a lot of these kind of uh, lines coming down from the eyes. As soon as I draw this central line in, any any connection that I make from these uh, these lines here, it should just start popping geometry in quite effectively. So, just connect this one up, and when I start cutting these through, they're all going to go into the nostril area. So I don't really need to worry about them too much. Uh, all bunching up in that one little area because so I can feed them in on themselves and into the nostril uh, and hide them that way.
Okay, so I've just got this last one to do. Okay, so that's it's kind of like the bridge of the nose. Um, apart from this this little central bit here, so I'll, I'll get rid of those lines. And I'll create two quads there. And that's just to give a, a bit of a roundness to the nose. If you've just got straight lines coming down, um, when you start kind of trying to feed that into anything, um, you're either going to end up with loads and loads of uh, edges bunching up together, or you can potentially put in a row of polys to give it a little bit more kind of um, density. <clears throat> Uh, for the, the actual bulbous part of the nose. <coughs> okay, so I've just got this one one little bit on the top of the nose to uh, sort out and that's just a case of deleting that line off and then drawing a new one back into position and there you go. Okay, so now what I need to look at doing is drawing in some lines um, for the, the jaw area and looping it round into the mouth. So I'm going to start off by connecting up this area here to the cheekbone, or to, to the runoff from the, uh, the eyeball even. And I'm going to put in another pole, as you've just seen. And extend these lines down so that they actually follow the shape of the jaw. Um, so yeah, it's getting there, and this is just a case of looping it back into the mouth area now. So this is going to run down the jaw line, as will this one, and then actually this one as well will kind of go to that kind of back of the jaw there and make some of its shape and, and then the rest of them are kind of going to feed into the mouth area I'm going to, uh, I'm going to sort this nose out first because it's really bugging me so what I'll do is just feed some of these edges into that nostril area and yeah, if you overrun anything, it kind of, it will um, make it a five-sided object. So you'll find that some faces do disappear and it can actually be quite a frustrating process. The thing that I'd say is just stick with it and you know delete edges as you go or um, just control Z it. But if you are going to do that, make sure you keep an eye on that dynamic feature. Because um, it, can, it can be useful but it can also um, make your brush size a hell of a lot bigger than you actually anticipate it. So um, just keep an eye on it. Okay, uh, so I need that brush size to be a lot smaller so I can draw this line over. Um, the lazy mouse in on so okay right I'll just be really careful and it's still not going so all I'll do with that is just extend it down into the rest of the nose and yeah there we go that's fixed it right so we just got these uh, few little bits left so what I'm going to do is run a line through that and up to one of those nostril elements and across from there as well. And again, this is just going to loop through. And yeah, okay, if, if your file saves, um, it can give visual errors in your um, viewport. Don't worry about it, it's, it's not done anything. You just need to either scale out or something and it'll all pop back. Um, okay, so there's not many left to get rid of. And there's a feature within ZBrush that I've noticed, um, and it's not a particularly controllable one, but I've noticed that certain lines 
won't actually let you delete them and what they'll do is they'll they'll uh, smooth themselves out rather than actually delete in order to get rid of those you just need to press the alt key and actually click on them rather than draw a line through them and it should actually get rid of them um, if it was like um, a guaranteed feature that you could do that to smooth lines out it would actually make ZBrush a hell of a lot better for doing your topology because you'd actually be able to start lining things up but in all the documentation that I've looked at I've not actually found the the specific way of setting those lines up uh, to actually work in the way that you'd expect maybe it might be something that they uh, incorporate in version R7 um, but for this one it's it's not actually getting rid of it so as I say best way to do it is to press the alt key and click on it but what I'm going to do is just draw through and hopefully it might no okay so yeah just click on it and it goes and okay everything's connected up there I've got a quad here and it might be a case of I just need to draw another line over the top of it but in certain cases you find some polys just won't work whatever you try don't lose patience with it and don't get really frustrated with it what I'd suggest you look at doing is either have a go at fixing it with this method of just drawing lines through or if it really doesn't want to play ball take it into another program and fill that area in so again I've got the quad there and it's just not filling in I'm not going to spend too much time trying to fix that I'm just going to fix it in a different program um, okay so down to the bottom lip here and what I want to do is just loop that back into that specific line Hopefully without kind of getting rid of any uh, any faces that I've already drawn in. And I just want to do a, a central line so I can start building up some of this information for the mouth area. Okay, so I want to look at maybe feeding this through into some of the geometry that I've got elsewhere. First off, I just need to cut that one out and draw it back across. Okay, uh, and now I can start looping these edges around the mouth so I get the proper kind of edge flow going on. You want to give a, a number of loops that go around that mouth, otherwise like I say, when you come to animating, you're not going to get the full range of expressions because you won't have the geometry there to support it. So, you know, put put about three or four lines in there around that mouth area and you should be able to get some good features then going on. Okay, yeah, that dynamic feature is turned itself back on again <clears throat> and it just it makes it so much easier uh, to actually line things up and get get these little green circles working together if you actually turn the, the dynamic feature off okay so we're just coming to the last sort of bit now where I just need few lines to kind of go around that jaw area and what I'm going to do is run one going all the way from the jaw right up in front of the ear up to the top of the head doesn't matter whether it goes all squiggly because I can relax this stuff out later on in a different program uh, but that'll probably be a, a different video okay so um you just need to kind of draw some of these lines across to form the shape of the chin. And what I'm going to do in a moment is just kind of draw in a little bit of information um, to give 
a little bit more geometry for that kind of chin area so again it's just adding in a, an extra loop that will cancel itself out when the, the mirror uh, of the face starts coming into play Okay, so not much left to do on this now. Just a, a few loops to kind of feed back into the the jawline. And then uh, once I've got that done, I can look at evening out some of this geometry uh, so it's a little bit more consistent. Okay, so if you just if you don't want to use the the stroke feature where it's it gives you the lazy mouse option, you can just be really precise over how you want to do this. You can even tap the shift key, but just be careful if you're doing looped objects um, and you press the shift key, it will go the entire way around that object. Um, so yeah, like I said, just be careful of that because otherwise you can end up with lines all over the place can be useful for doing like tubes and, and arms and things like that but for the face I, I really want to have control over where those lines are going so I wouldn't use that specific feature. Okay. Right so I'll just draw this line across here and I'm going to look to Put on a little bit more information just around the lip area. Um, mainly because it doesn't really go up to where the, the mouth would close. So I'm just going to extend some of these lines up and down from the top lip. Make sure you don't kind of connect with the other side of the mouth, otherwise it'll look to collapse it all off and uh, close it all in. And I do actually want a gap there so that when I take this into a, a different program, I could potentially look at making some morph targets. Okay, so I just need to... Um, I did this little bit of an area up here, like so. Cut this last line through, and then tidy this bit up where it's not quite lining up. And that silly dynamic feature just keeps on turning itself on. Okay, so keeping it centralised and then cutting a line through. And if you end up with this sort of triangle thing, just chop a little little bit through it and there you go, ends up with a, a quad. Now because I've been working in symmetry, all I need to do is click somewhere on the model and it will create both sides of the face. 